Right, hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I'm sitting here having FOMO about not going to Everwinter this weekend. I thought it might be fun to uh, go over, do a little list preview and go look at some of the lists for Everwinter. Uh, I have a couple friends who are going, uh, who I hope will do well there. I'll definitely look at their lists. Um, I have a couple other friends who are not playing AOS, but are going to play um, MCP, Marvel Crisis Protocol, um, which is another fun game that I have not really focused on learning because I've been into very into AOS. Obviously, I made a YouTube channel about it, so <laughs> hope that implies that I like it. Um, but yeah, Everwinter happening this weekend in beautiful Waltham, Massachusetts. Uh, I used to live there for a year for work. Um, wish I was going this year. Uh, I even kind of promised Josh Hankin at Nova that I would go. Sorry, Josh. Um, betrayed his trust. Feel horrible. <laughs> um, but I couldn't quite swing it with um, having gone to Atlanta last month, like, whatever, three or four weeks ago. So hopefully I'll make it up to Everwinter next year. Uh, I think I said the same thing last year, so <laughs> maybe next year will be the year. Um, yeah, it is 116 people, I believe, uh, is what it ended up as, somewhere around there. Um, maybe 112. Um, five games, so there will be multiple 5 O's. Um, so scoring well will matter. I am not sure about the packet in terms of what tiebreakers and stuff are. Um, but I imagine it's some sort of strength of schedule or total victory points or something like that. Either way, um, it'll be a tough field. I'm sure everybody will have some good games, I hope. And uh, yeah, let's go through some lists. I, my cat, as usual, my cat is right here. He's black. He's hard to see. I could look up at the camera. Okay. I have, a, I have a cat who's who's all up in the way. You can see his tail. <laughs> very fluffy. Uh, he's very large. Um, all right, back to Warhammer. So looking through this, I did want to look. I guess I can I. Yeah. All right. Getting better at using the search feature. So I noticed I looked over these real quick earlier. I noticed there's a lot of KO. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I counted. Kind of right earlier. Oh, I guess it says right here at the bottom. 10 items, 10 KOs. Uh, so a lot of Karadron. Um, I think there were. Th there's four. All right, so there's four cities. I'm excited to look at these because uh, it's the new cities book. So I'm curious what people are bringing. Uh, I did see a couple of Cruel Boys folks, which is awesome. Um, lots of Seraphon to eh, less than KO. Eight Seraphon, um, ten blades of corn. So a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the uh, usual suspects. There we go. God, words. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Did anybody say OBR? No, they're all not Um, see, so yeah, only five OBR. Um, and. At least one is not Null Myriad. Uh, that's Madigan, who is very active on the discords and is the master of rules. Um, uh, let's see, what else? P Maggotkin, uh, two Slanesh, a good few Skaven, six Skaven. Who am I forgetting? Flesh Eater Quartz, I assume. Well, it's definitely the old book because uh, it just went on pre order. I think a good. No? All right. Only a few Soul Blight. And what is there? I guess I guess KO and Seraphon are really the big big baddies here. Have some Gloom Spite. Have some Sylvaneth. I know there were a few Ideneth that are probably all sharks. Yeah, I think I think after the ten KO, the ten blades of corn, and the eight seraphon, it is much more much more spread out as to who's going to be here uh, in terms of factions. There's like three or four beasts of chaos. Five. All right, five beasts of chaos. Uh, there is, I think, one night haunt, one one storm cast. 
But anyway, looks like a good, uh, yeah, I don't know, good good place to have answers to KO. And Seraphon would somewhat overlap a little bit, I think. Um, maybe those, maybe one of those will keep the other in check. We'll see. Um, I do think there is some stuff here that will really mess up KO. Um, Beast of Chaos is a real bad matchup for them. Um, and then having looked at the list, I'm not like, not super excited to look at a bunch of KO lists, but I'll just take a peek at a couple. It seemed like there was a fairly good, um, spread of like what people are taking in terms of like frigates and some Endron riggers versus like all thunderers. I don't think I saw anybody with, um, yeah, there's nobody with the um, Army of Renown. So none of the MSU Thunder Spam in Grunstrak, uh, the Expeditionary Force, or whatever it is. So here we got Admiral Chemist Chemist, Spell on a Bottle for the Bridge, um, 2x15, and then Ironclad. Cool. This is Victor's list that I played at Worlds. Um, got another Admiral Navigator. I. What is it, an ordinator? I have no idea what that is. That seems like a Stormcast thing. Um, Arcanaut, 300 Riggers, 10 Thunders, another 300 Riggers, Frigate, Ironclad. That's kind of fun. That's kind of more balanced. Um, then we've got Admiral, Celestant Prime, oh shit, Endron Master, 6 Riggers, 2x3 Sky Wardens, another 6 Endron Riggers, and 2 Frigates. Might be my favorite one. Um, Ender Drinkers are real good. I honestly I think you go I think you can go two by nine, like my friend Roger runs, and it's just ridiculous. I don't think you need the Sky Wardens for anything. I think you just go two by nine Ender Drinkers. Um Let's see. Nav Navigator Admiral Endron Master. Two by ten Arcanauts, nine Ender Drinkers, ten Thunders, a frigate and an ironclad. I, I like that. I like the more kind of balanced, mixed stuff. I don't know. The week's list, but with Brock, so totally different. <laughs> All right, cool. Got Navigator, got Brock, got Ender Master. I think there's two lists with Brock. Um, there we go. There's the 2x9 Ender and Riggers, Arcanaut Company, Gun Hauler. Oh, but it's in an Ironclad. Mm. I, like the Ender, I, like, I like the Frigates. I like the Ender and Riggers with the Frigates so that you can pop out and be ASF. Um, Seems less good in one ironclad than in two frigates. Um, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you go two frigates, not gun hauler ironclad with this, but whatever. Uh, not gonna think too hard about it. It's KO. This one's got a lot. Oh, this one's got full uh, hero loadout. Navigator code right. All right, no, this is the best just for having the code right. Uh, Chemist Admiral and Brock. 2x10 Arcanauts, 10 Thunders, 6 Endron Riggers, and 2 Frigates. That's cool. That's fine. Maybe not optimized, but you got a code right, so you're winning. Uh, oh, this is Drecky Flint. I think that's the guy with the mustache guns. Ridiculous. Navigator, Chemist. Oh my gosh. Who would have guessed? 10, 2x10 10 Thunders and a Gun Hauler, 6 Endron Riggers, and 2 Frigates. That's fun. Like I said, the balance is nice. Ha having some engine triggers that you can throw into combat and a frigate, and then some thunders, and having it just be not 30 thunders and ways to move them is nice. Uh, we got another code right in this list a chemist, an engine master, a navigator, the admiral. And this one's got 2x6 sky wardens and 2x3 engine riggers. I like it better the other way. I think Edmund Riggers are just better than Sky Wardens, but people seem to like Sky Wardens. Uh, and that's two Frigates. Another Brock. I think we're up to three Brocks. Navigator, Endron Master. Six, six, three Endron Riggers. Two Frigates and two Gun Haulers. That's cute. I think that'll kick some ass. And then, last but not least, we have a Navigator, another Endron Master, an Admiral, and we've got six. God, I wish, wish this said how many. I'm, I'm guilty of this. I, I never write like six whatever. I always just leave it the way the app has it, which it just has the points. And then you kind of have to work out from the points if it's 
single or double reinforced, and it's annoying. I really wish the output said how many were in the unit. But anyway, I know they're 120, so this is 600 riggers. Uh, I believe that is 15 thunders. Oh yeah, because it's three by all of the special weapons. 10 Arcanauts, a frigate, and an ironclad. God, 800 points is just so many points in boats. And they're good, and it's hard to kill them, but I don't know. 800 points is so many points in boats. Two frigates is 200 points less. That seems, I don't know, seems like better points spent elsewhere. But whatever, I don't know. Big boats are fine. If you like big boats, you like big boats. Like big boats and you cannot lie. So there we go. That's all that's all the 10 KO. Let's look at the blades of corn. I have the feeling there is the feeling there's a lot more variety in you know what, let's let's be semi smart here. We're gonna go from the bottom up so that we can go in order. Uh anyway, what I was I was gonna say, I bet there's a lot more variety in the blades of corn list than there are in the um KO lists. Part of that is just more units <laughs> in the army book and more units that are like good probably. And I think the sub factions also differentiate maybe a little more. Like taking, you know, one sub faction really throws you into a lot of blood letters versus like the mortals, the demons versus mortals. Like so we'll see. Uh I'm actually gonna look at Chai's first just to see if this is the same list he played against me. Blood Secretor, it's not, because he doesn't have Scarbrand, uh, so it's not the same. He's got Bloodthirster with the standard setup, a Ritualist, a Slaughter Priest, a Blood Secretor, and a second Slaughter Priest. Two by ten Skull Reapers, so he's taken out Scarbrand, and he's put in ten more Skull Reapers, and then he's gone down to one Calls of Karanak instead of two. Cool, he's got the Rat. Axe and the skulls, and then he's got six furies, which is cute, and five wrath mongers. I like this list. This is a cool one. I dig it, Chai. Um, the wrath mongers are giving plus one attack to all the skull reapers. Um, furies are always a cute little ally. Uh, yeah, slaughter of sorcery, yep, of course. And then skull fiend tribe. I can't remember which one the Sculpting Tribe is. Hold on. Hold your horses for one moment. I look it up. I figure out what it is. So this is how we learn. This is how we learn, friends. You gotta know what the enemy army does. That's half the battle. We um my group has a relatively new guy in it who like played fantasy and 40k and stuff, but Relatively new to AOS, and we've been—he's—he you know, was like one in five or one in six in his first six or seven games, and we're like, dude, like you're you are you are still in just the learning what the heck like everything does phase of learning AOS. Like, there is no shame in losing five of your first six games to people who play in tournaments all the time and like have been playing AOS for years. Like. There is there is a steep learning curve of just knowing what other armies are even capable of. Um, that you got to get over that hump. All right, so yeah, Skull Fiend Tribe is unmodified charge roll of eight plus for a Skull Fiend Tribe Mortals unit gets strike first. All right, so you're giving three d six charge with the Bloodthirsters to like one of the Skull Reaper units, and then they're going to get ASF. And then the other unit's going to charge in, and you'll be able to strike with a couple things in a row. Alright, the other lists, Alexander Gonzalez and all cats from the Corsairs, got the Bloodthirster, Slaughter Priest, Ritualist as a Bloodmaster, that's interesting, and the Herald of Corn on a Blood Throne, a little, and a Blood Scrater, uh, so a little mix of demon and mortal heroes. Um, got a big unit of Bloodletters, have a unit of, I think this is just 10 Blood Warriors, Flesh Hounds, Furies, and Wrathmongers. It's cool. I think it's really hard to make a blood, or uh, blood, uh, blades of corn list that I would read and be like, "Oh, I hate this. This is stupid." I, they're just a cool army. It's hard. It's hard not to like blades of corn. Uh, and he's got all three of the invocations. 
Up next, we have a Reapers of Vengeance with, ooh, five by five Flesh Hounds, Scarbrand, two Bloodmasters, and a Bloodthirster with the standard loadout, uh, and then two by three Skull Crushers. How fast are Flesh Hounds? This is kind of a little MSU Flesh Houndy thing, which is. After after having just said, I don't think you can make a Blades of Corn list that I wouldn't like. Um, this one's weird enough that I don't know where like the damage comes from. I mean, obviously Scarbrand is a ton of damage, but you just kill Scarbrand in this, and then like Flesh Hounds aren't scary. Whoa, hold on, Flesh Hounds have a Flesh Hounds have a Ranged attack? I never realized this. Oh, it's just the ah, it's just the the gorehound has has one, God, one eight inch range, attack, two up, four up, no ren, one damage. Why, why would you, why would you even do such a thing? That's terrible, GW, and it's not even a champ, so it can't give commands to the unit. That's horrible. Well, it's a lot of unbinds, at least, for 5x5 five five Flesh Hounds, so that's something. Um, that's a weird one, though. It's a weird one. Got the Axe and the Skulls. I feel like you at least need those two invocations. I, I don't know. You know you, you, the invocations are so good. You almost never leave home without them. At least two. Because if nothing else, they're taking up space, and you can use them as blockers and stuff, and it'd be annoying. Uh, moving on, another Reapers of Vengeance. Um, I should have noted what this does too. Demon units get plus one to hit against an enemy hero, and you get a Blood Tithe for heroes. Whatever. All right, that's fine, I guess. Uh, again, this is the not quite standard Bloodthirster because it's Halo of Blood instead of Argath, King of Blades. As a second Bloodthirster with Argath, King of Blades, and then a Slaughter Priest, a Ritualist, Drom, and a Blood Secrator. Got 10 Blood Reavers, 20 Blood Warriors, 2x8 Claws of Karanak, just the Skulls for Invocations, 2x6 Furies, and of course the two Gore Chosen of Drom. It's fun. I feel like with the two Furies, two Claws of Karanak, and the Blood Reavers. You have a ton of like chaff and can just like control board space, I guess. Um, and then you've got the two Bloodthirsters, which is cool. Um, all right, we got a Gore Tide that is not laid out well for me to read. It's fine, but it's got 20 Blood Warriors, 2 by 10 Blood Reavers, 10 Wrathmongers, got the Godsworn Hunt, so yeah, it's got Fedra up here. Grand Strat is not sold up sorcery since it has Thedra, kind of trading off the Grand Strat uh, for the ability to do magic dominance. Um, for a tactic, got a Bloodthirster, uh, got, got pretty much the usual hero setup. Alright, I'm just gonna I'm gonna skip fast through the rest of these um, corn lists, just see if there's anything particularly interesting. So in Scarbrand Bloodthirster. I want to know. I want to know what the Halo of Blood does actually. Halo of Blood is oh, just gives auto strike first. Always strike first. I prefer turning off ward saves. I think, um, but if he has that somewhere else, it's fine. I don't think he does. Um, anyway, Scarbrand, Bloodthirster, Slaughter Priest, Blood Scrayer, Blood Master. Then we've got twenty Blood Warriors, ten Blood Letters, five Flesh Hounds. Got some Skull Crushers, and the Invocations. Cool. Whoop. You don't need to see my slack. Um, did that sneak in there? Oh, Grinning Blades. Ha! All right, so the two Grinning Blades are actually in here. All right, we will uh, come back to them in a second. <laughs> Guess when you search for Blades, you get Grinning Blades and Corn. Uh, to finish off the Corn, ooh, we've got a Lord of Corn on a Juggernaut with Diabolic Purpose and the Gore Cleaver. Uh, Diabolic Purpose, what is this? Add one to damage characteristics of attacks made by the general that target a hero. Okay. And the artifact of power is the Gore Cleaver. 
pick one of the weapons, improve the Ren by one, and sixes also do mortals. Intriguing. Probably bad. I don't know. He's an 8-inch move, 8 wounds, on a 2-up save. Not horrible. The Wrathforged Axe, uh, which you're certainly giving the extra run to. So that's 6 attacks on 3s, threes, 3s. Threes. With that artifact, it's Ren to 2 damage. And I guess Heroes, it would be 3. Uh, he's got a 5-up ward versus Mortals from Spells. He's got impact hits. He's you know he's just one juggernaut guy basically, and then once per battle at the start of the charge phase can call a stampede and get to reroll charges for skull crushers. So he's got two by three skull crushers I guess here. I don't know. That's interesting. I I, lo I love seeing something a little different. This guy is just like a and he's in a command entourage for an extra artifact. So he still has the Bloodthirster with turning off wards. This guy's a little like he's not super fast, but he can go he can go assassinate some like characters, I guess, and run around being an annoying piece of shit on a two up save. I mean I love my I love my my Nash tooth with the three up save and the ten inch move and ten wounds. And I feel like this is a this is a similar piece. Or you're trading off a little less I mean, he's much less mobile because he doesn't have um, he doesn't have fasten, obviously. So much less mobile than the Nash Tooth, but I don't know, maybe a similar little kind of cowboy hero, as we used to call them back in the day. I don't know if people still call them cowboys, um, but yeah, uh, back in fantasy, a cowboy was something like I don't know, a Sora scarf that on a cold one. It's an Agrodon now. Just a little fast hitty hero who can kind of run around and be self-sufficient and like kill things and get stuff done around the around the board. Uh, and then last blades of corn. Woo, got this. Um it's a regiment of renown, I believe, from Zinch. Uh so got the Magister from the Coven. Have the three endless spells from the Coven and the Ten Horrors. So that's that regiment of renown. We got eight claws, ten blood the blood letters, ten blood letters, two skull cannons. Oh gosh, this is weird. Korgarath, Korgus Kull, Bloodmaster, Bloodthirster, Skyla. I think that's maybe that's the Flesh Hound special character. Oh, this list is weird. And then a herald on a blood throne. I don't know. This seems super random. I don't know the theory behind this. It seems real random. It's cool. I don't know. Doesn't have doesn't have any of the invocations. I question the wisdom of bringing a bunch of zinch endless spells instead of your invocations. But I guess with like sigil of zinch. You can farm Blood Tithe off yourself from spell ignoring your own endless spell, probably. Maybe. I don't know exactly how that interaction works. And if you don't ignore it, you make spawns. So you probably are just making spawns out of blood letters and being annoying and maybe making spawns of the enemy. I don't know what the other two things do. I don't know. It's a weird list. I saw I saw some reference to like the corn spawn list somewhere. And I guess this is what that means. This is this is making spawn from the allies, uh, the regiment of renown. Weird. I don't know. I'd be curious to see how it works in practice. Alright, so we're getting to the special treat for me sooner than expected, uh, being the Grinning Blades Cool Boys lists, because obviously I'm a Cool Boys lover. Uh, the first one from Heather Wolf is Gobsprack, Snatch a Boss, Kill a Boss, um, Two Shamans, and then the Meyer Brute. Then we have Ten Gut Rippers, Ten Gut Rippers, oh, 20 Hobgrots. I don't like that. That should be two units, I think. Um, and then we got Six Bolt Boys, Six Bolt Boys, and the Grave Tide. Good list. I, I would prefer the Hobgrots to be two separate screens. The Bravery 4 
I don't know. You have a screen of 10 and you're like you don't really care if they die. You have a screen of 20 and suddenly you're like, oh man, I gotta be using Inspiring Presence on these. Because um, I think Killaboss Battleshock thing only works on Orcs, not Hobgrats. Could be wrong on that. Um, but other than that, very similar to a list that I've run. I didn't, I had six and three. Um, I ended up, I've talked about this before, I ended up not really liking the Break a Brute. Or break a boss on my brute Chagath. Um and I especially don't know that it's worth taking Warlord for an extra mount trait for the break a boss. It's just not mobile enough. Not mobile enough. It's like hitty, but it's not hitty enough. And some of it depends on you rolling your D three mortals to like amp up the number of attacks. I don't know. I'm just I was very disappointed with the break a boss in general. I hope that I hope it gets a glow up. I hope it either like goes down a little bit in points or like I've seen people throw this out that like it would be very cool if like those could be battle line in um skull bugs or something like that. But right now I don't think I don't think the break boss makes it into my lists. Uh and then the other one is similar as well. I mean there's only so much you can do with the crew boys. There's only so many war scrolls. Uh, you got Snatch a Boss. Uh, this one's got Egomaniac and Eyebiter Ash. Um, you know, it, this is yet another of our shitty magic items, artifacts that like is a once per game roll a die and maybe it does something and maybe it doesn't. It's like cool. Thanks for giving that as our only option for artifacts. Like thanks GW. Um, so my list, I took the Beast Kill slot. This person took the Eyebiter Ash. Whatever, that's fine. Eager Maniac is going to keep your Snatch Boss alive. I never, in my experience, I never, my Snatch Boss never really died before like everything else in my army died. Like the Snatch Boss always seemed to be one of the last things to go. And maybe that's because I was playing a little more conservative with it and keeping it behind like the Gut Rippers and screens and things. I mean, I talked in, talked in one of my previous videos um, about WCW about having been. I believe I, I talked about being a little too conservative with the Snatch Boss, and like he would kind of get stuck behind in my castle sometimes when I needed him to be out front doing damage, and like managing that a little more poor, a little more poorly than I I could have. Um, so with the Ego Maniac, you're throwing wounds off onto the twenty Gut Rippers. Um, so maybe you know maybe Ego Maniac is nice to be be able to be a little more aggressive with the Snatch Boss because he does hit super hard. Um, other than that, another break a boss with Smellion, two shamans, kill a boss, gobsprack, sweet, 20 gut ribbos, 10 gut ribbos, 2 by 10 Hobgrats, fantastic, 6 and 3 bullet points. Again, very, very similar to what I ran with the Acolyte Battalion and two battle regiments. Um, does make me nervous that only have two things in the Acolyte Battalion, but what can you do? Well, I mean, I know what you can do. You can drop the Break Boss and take another Swamp Kala, and then another Unit of Slitus or something. <laughs> Whatever. You can change around your list. Um, I hope they do well, both of these Cruel Boys players. Good luck to you. Uh, I hope that you get to make at least one KO player very sad that they can't shoot you from far away. <laughs> That's my wish for you. Um, Seraphon is hardly even worth looking at, let's be real. Um, Dean, I don't know if this is exactly the list he played at World Championships, but uh, I believe he's the only... Yeah, he's the only one who's cool enough to take a Coalesced list with a Troglodon, a Scarvet on Agrodon, and a Starseer. And 2 by 6 Agrodon Lancers, 10 Source Warriors, 5 Source Guard. Ooh, and a Stegadon. That's cute. And 500 Zapanchi with Bolas. Yes. Love it. I love this list. This is fantastic. This is close to what I've tested on um, TTS once or twice. Um, I went even more heavy on the Agrodons and didn't do the Source Warriors or the Guard or the Stegadon. So I guess it's not that close to what I tested. But I, whatever. I like, I like this list. It's cool. Uh, I love Hunters of Flanchi. Um I love Agrodons. I think they're great. I think they're just 
overshadowed by the other half of the book um, because obviously Starborn are gross. Um, yeah, this is a bunch of Starborn lists, a bunch of Fangs of Sotek, one Dracotheon's Tale, but like it's still basically the same thing. Like here's Basil's list: it's a Starseer, Flam, Croak, Master Lith Bear, Star Priest. Stop me! Stop me when you're shocked. Two Charger units, Raptonons, um, Pink unit, a Source Guard unit, unit of Ripper Dactyls. Whatever. It's Seraphon. Cool. Cool story, Seraphon players. There's only so much difference between all your lists. I'm not going to read them all. Uh, we might get some variety in the Maggot Kin, so let's look at those. So we got the Fowling Host with Bloab, Festus, Great Unclean One, Arbinger of Decay, Morbidex Twice Born, Orgot's Demon Spew, and then Three Beasts of Nurgle. <laughs> That's it. So this is just, oh man, this is Three Beasts of Nurgle for Battle Line, and just all the big Nurgly gross monsters you can fit. The Great Unclean One, Bloab, Morbidex, and Orgot's are all the big guys. Harbinger, um, Cool. I think he's a priest. I think he should have. He was supposed to pick a pick a priest thing here. Um, but whatever. Maybe I don't know. Maybe did he forget something? Could be wrong. Maybe, I'm probably wrong. That's fine. And I I don't remember what Festus does. But whatever. <laughs> this is a bunch of monster spam. Cool. Live your best life, Nurgle. Nurgle folks. Uh, we got another Befouling Host with Bloab, a Great Unclean One, and one Rap Ringer Sorcerer with Horfrost. And we've got, ooh, we got two units of two Beasts of Nurgle, two units of 20 Plague Bearers, and a unit of 10 Plague Bearers. That's just a lot of bodies and wounds and, and beef to get through. It's got, you know, oh, it's also got three Nurglings. Um, and we got uh, two, two Naramals. So this is, you know, he's also got the Bell and Plague fail, Flail and the Wither Staves. So this is a summoning, summoning, sorry, summoning Nurgle list, which I think is cool. I think it's a cool way to play Nurgle. Uh, then we got Drown Men, so we're going to see some flies, I guess. Um, we got Lord of Affliction to let some flies deep strike. Uh, Orgots, a Sloppity, that's it for characters. And we got 20 Plague Bearers, two Puskoil Blight Lords. I believe those are, yeah, mortal flies. So we got two by two mortal flies, and then we have two by three um, demon flies, are the plague drones, I believe. Three nerglings and six furies in a two drop. That's cool. It doesn't go all in on the flies, like it's got the 20 plague bearers. Um, seems like the flies are more of like a little techie piece. I don't know how techie flies are, but whatever. I, I think you know what I mean. A little tech piece. They go. They come down somewhere with the Lord of Afflictions and mess with people's plans while Plague Bears and everything else moves up and holds the line. Seems cool. Um, <laughs> the Beast of Times. The Beast of Times, it was the worst of times. Um, we got another Befouling Host here. I think Befouling Host is what lets you take two normal uh, for the summoning, if I'm remembering right. Uh, we got Sloppity, we got the Glotkin. I'm kind of surprised this is the first, this is the only Glotkin list, because Glotkin has been fairly popular. Uh, so it's Glotkin, Sloppity, Orgots, and Bloab. A lot of big guys. And then five Beasts of Nurgle, one Nurgling unit, Pendulum, Grave Tide, and the two Normals. And a two drop. Cool. I have not, I haven't, I haven't actually gotten to face any Nurgle since this like Nurgle revival, um, and I hope I do soon because Nurgle's fun. What else we got? Uh, oh, I didn't actually see how many gits there are. There's what's that? Eight. So there's actually a good few. There's a good few gits too. I didn't realize they're up there with they're right there tied with Seraphon. So they're in that they're in the top four most um, taken. Uh, faction. Uh, so let's see what we got here. I know one of them because it's uh, and Jake from my group. Uh, but we'll go through all of these just real quick. Uh, that one. 
that one. All right, so Chris Werder got Chasing the Moon, so he has the dog, uh, dog boss. Dankhold Trog boss, General, who's going to be real tanky and hard to kill to go Chasing the Moon and get the Grand Strat. This is in King's Gits. Um, then we've got a Madcap and a Scragrot for characters. Seems like the trend lately has been low character count in Gloom Spite. I mean, they were never taking, it's not like they were ever taking all six, um, but I feel like it's gone down even more. Like, there's no, there's no, like, Scragrot and Green Crack and, like, two Shamans and, like, a Web Spinner Shaman. I don't know. It just, it seems like it's gone down even more. Like, I feel like you see the Scragrot and a Madcap. And sometimes that's it. And then sometimes like this, you have the dank hold for the, to be the general and get the grand strat. Uh, this has nine rock guts, two by 20 stabas. I like seeing this resurgence of stabas. I think they're very good. Nets, the nets are just so annoying. They're just kind of annoying to get rid of. Uh, then we got a reinforced unit of dank holds. So two dank hold trogoths, six sneaky snufflers, and then the gabapalooza. That's great. Love it. Cool. Gits are great. God, maybe I should maybe I should play Gits. I'm kind of trying to decide like what army I would want to paint and play next. And I am on a hiatus from I should make a whole video about this kind of stuff, but I'm on a hiatus from painting whole armies. <laughs> After having worked so hard. I, I painted my OBR this year for ATC over the summer. So I took like a couple months and speed painted those. And I um I spent weeks getting my cruel boys ready, and I'm just like so done right now with painting armies. I'm having a very nice, relaxing time just painting some like single models and single characters. So a little soon to be thinking about what army I want to paint up next. But gits are fun. I even I have some gits that I've worked on even. Um, whatever. Back to lists. That's enough rambling. Uh, so after Chris, we have David Cole with another King's gits. Are these are they all King's gits? Nope, we have one we have one Jaws of Mork and one Shrugs Trog Herd, and the rest are King's Gits. Uh, so that's throw that in your data crunchy. Um so this King's list has Trug. Oh, this is weird. This is like an MSU Trogoth list. So it's got Trug, a fungoid, who's the general with clammy hand and moon face moment, and itchy nuisance, a web sp the web spinner shaman. And then we have two by three Fellwaters, four by three Rot Guts, and a Gabapalooza, a Marsh Corolla, and a unit of Spore Splatter Fanatics. I imagine the Spore Splatters like stand in front of Trug and make sure he doesn't get shot. But I need to actually read the wording on the um need to read the wording on their line of sight blocking. We can do it right now. Spore splatters. Spore cloud. Visitability between two models is blocked wow, by these. Yada yada. Does not apply if either of the models is a... Sorry. Does not apply if either of the models the line is drawn between is a model in this unit. So it doesn't block line of sight itself. Got it. Or a model that can fly, or a monster, and Trug is maybe a monster. I'm not positive. Don't know for sure. Where is? Probably fine. Hold on. Try to find Trug in my app real quick. Humor me. Want to see if he's a monster. Destruction, Gloom Spike Gits, is he in here? He's probably, he's probably like a... Hold on, hold on. There he is, there's Trug. All right, Trug is indeed a monster. All right, so, whatever. So the Spore Splatters are not blocking line of sight to Trug. Whatever, they can block line of sight to something else. Um, it does their push room frenzy to add an. That's it's probably more for the attack buff then. 
you're adding one to the attack's characteristics of melee weapons used by other friendly groups like gets units while they're within wholly within nine of the fanatics. So they're just they might just be sitting behind all these targets and giving them all plus one attack, which is good because they have low numbers and high quality attacks. Cool. All right, we're learning. We're learning, friends. All right, another king's gets list. This is Eugene, I believe. Um, we got Squig Boss General with the Clammy Hand. We've got a Web Spinner Shaman, a Madcap Shaman. No Scragrot. Interesting. I don't think the last one had Scragrot either. Oh, yeah, no, it has Trug. No Scragrot. Because you don't have a lot of room after Trug and a bunch of trolls. Um, maybe Scragrot's falling a little bit out of favor? It surprises me just because, like, controlling where the moon goes is so good and essential in many regards. Um, anyway, it's a very small hero loadout, and we got Squig Herd, I believe that's double reinforced, I believe that's 30, a uh, unit of Shooters, this is maybe also double reinforced, is this 60 Shooters? Sorry, I need to look these things up. Squig Herd is... 140 points, so 420, yeah, is double reinforced. And then the Shooters. Da, 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 da. Shooters are 120, yeah, so that's a double reinforced unit of Shooters as well. So that's 60 Shooters, 30 Squig Herd, big units. 2x5 Bounders, and then 20 Stabas. Um, and we got a unit of Sneaky Snufflers and Goblin Palooza to be buffing things up. And a unit of Fellwater Trogoths to be debuffing something else. Cool. Uh, next, we got Jake's List, the list I've played against, um, which I like a lot. Um, it's got Scragrot, Dankhold Trogboss, General to be doing the Chasing the Moon, Survive and be under the Moon all the time, uh, Squig Boss, Madcap, and then the little piece of, a little piece of fun. He's got the Big Grix Cruel Shots. Regiment of Renown, so the Cruel Boys, it's the Hero Beast Killer, sorry, Beast Skewer Killbow. Uh, and it's the one where if he, the, the Killbow, I don't know if it just needs to hit or wound something, whatever, gives gives a buff to these 2 by 3 bolt boys. So this is, um, this is Gits plus a little bit of Cruel Boys shooting. This can, you know, this can be a little scary to monsters. Um, these do have the Venom built in, so if they're hitting on, you know, Obviously, you don't have a shaman or something to buff them up, but they're still doing mortals on sixes. Um, it's just a fun little addition. And then he's got um, nine rock guts, three fell waters, twenty shooters, and a unit of a, a single reinforced unit of squigs. Um, they like, I think. Um, I think when I faced him last, he didn't have the. 24 squigs could be wrong could be wrong i think that i think this is slightly tweaked from what i faced um but i like it it's not it's not gels of mork and it's not like all in on the squigs but like you've got this big piece of beef with the nine rock guts that the dank hold can give plus one attack to with auto attack and then you've also got this 24 squig herd that you can mash in somebody's face uh that's a little bit faster because you do still have the squig boss um so you can unleash the squigs and really get in there uh, and then, of course, you can bring them all back out of the shrine. So that's annoying. Um, yeah, I know when I, when I faced him, he had dank holds, so I think he swapped that out for squid curds. Moving on, good luck to Jake. Um, Pagano's got King's Gits with Madcap. Two Madcaps. Three Madcaps. Oh my god. Three Madcap Shamans. Scragrot and a Squig Boss. Seems aggressive. Um, the two, two, two of them have Horfrost, one has Merciless Blizzard. Um, really want to get that Horfrost, I guess. Two units of Stabas, two, uh, yeah, sorry. One by 10 Boingrat Bounders, one by 15. Gobblepalooza, Snufflers, Loon Smash at Fanatics. Cool. Gits, I think Gits is much like Blades of Corn for me, where like it's very hard for me to see a Gits list and not think it would be fun to play. Uh, next up, we have our only Jaws of Mork. 
So this is also chasing the moon, but the general is just the squig boss. So it's a little more dangerous than the um, the big trog boss for this general. Um, he's very survivable. Although I guess the squig boss at least has lookouts there. Um, yeah, Madcap, Scragrat, Squig Boss. And then this is 3 by 10 bounders, I believe that is. Let me double check. Let me double check. Yeah, 3 by 10 bounders. Unit of Stabas. Couple Palooza. Two units of Snufflers. And a unit of Sports Blattas. Bounders are real fast. And 10. Can do work so three by ten can do some some good work i think this is that's scary uh the penultimate gets list we're back to king's gets this is protect the shrine it's always interesting because like well i guess it's not a freebie it's not just not get destroyed it's not have things near it i guess whatever anyway um got protect the shrine with a web spinner, Scragrat, Scuttle Boss, Loon Boss, Loon Boss. That's it. Uh, oh, uh, all right. First one's on Mangler Squigs. Second one is on a giant cave squig. That's great. The Mangler Squigs are so cool. I don't know what the Git Shield does. Um, you never see it. The. Oh my god. Leering Git Shield. Unmodified rolls of one for attacks that target the bearer cause one mortal wound to the attacking unit after all the attacks have been resolved. If... Oh, huh, that's cute. If the bearer is slain by an attack made by an enemy unit, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of the battle. This does not specify... Melee. That's interesting. I, I haven't seen that before, and that's actually an interesting choice. Because, like, the Loom Boss on Mangler Squigs can be... can be a little hitty. Like, it's not, not the scariest thing in the world, but, like, you do want to deal with it, I think. And then, like, with that, like, it suddenly gets... I don't know. Like, throwing throwing 20 shots into it from, like, a shooting unit, you're going to take three mortals back like that's not necessarily trivial like i'm just thinking about i'm thinking about like bliss barbs shooting this guy like there is it is very conceivable that a bliss barb unit would shoot this guy and do like five mortal wounds to itself which is going to kill you know you kill five of your 11 bliss barbs just trying to shoot a mangler squig like that feels bad um yeah that's cute and then I, I feel like the, oh, you kill, you kill it, and, like, you get minus one to hit for the rest of the battle. Like, who cares? And again, think about, like, the Bliss Barbs. Like, oh, no, the the one unit of Bliss Barbs that did the finishing blow on this Mangler Squig gets minus one to hit. Like, you probably don't care. I feel like it's more scary that, like, it just makes the... Um, yeah, it just makes the... Makes it less... Sorry, it makes it less of a um, trivial decision to just like throw some shots into this guy or something. I don't know. It's just something more for the enemy to think about, I guess. Um, got a scuttle boss on a spider. Sweet. This is great. I'm, I'm digging this list. It's cool. Um, five, three by five spider riders, an arachnorak spider, 10 bounders, 20 stabas. Let's be honest, this is probably gonna get wrecked probably gonna get wrecked but uh it's awesome it's cool i'm gonna pause for a second just a second because i'm distracted sorry about that all right and i'm back some somebody might have been wrong on the internet and that needed to be addressed immediately so so i had to pause for a moment there and, and type because you can't let that sort of thing fly if, if somebody's wrong on the internet and nobody tells them if a tree falls in the woods, it doesn't make a sound. I don't know. It's just not, not allowed. Um, anyway, what I was saying, Stephen Lincoln, that was this list, right? Stephen, this, this is awesome. Props. I hope, I hope you win some games with this. Do I think you'll win a lot of games? No. Do I hope you'll win games? Yes. Love, love to see some spiders. Love to, love to see some cool characters that you don't see that often. Good luck.
and then last but not least, Tyler Hilltree. We got a Dankle Trog boss and Trug in Trug's Trog Herd. We got one, two, three, four, five single Trogoths, Dankle Trogoths, and then three by three Rock Gut Trogoths. Kind of wish the three by three Rock Guts were like six and three, or even one by nine. Like, you just throw your nine onto one, that like the most central point that you want to hold, and just say deal with it. And if they deal with it, they come back out of the shrine, and you're like, here's five more Trogoths. And then your five single dang holds can run around, but I don't know, whatever. Um, Beasts of Chaos, let's look at you. Uh, so Jacob is in my group, but he, you know, ruthlessly and rudely and cruelly abandoned us to be a bottom table bully. Um, so we all hate him forever, and he's the worst. No, just kidding. Jacob's great. He wins a ton of games. He's real good at Warhammer. Um, which I, I think he might... Well, I anyway, don't, don't need to talk about rumors of personal life things. But um, I hope I get to play him soon, after every winter, and after I'm back to playing a little more. Um, so Jacob's taking All Herd, uh, in Beast of Chaos, obviously. Um, I don't know what Desecrating Bray Herd is, actually. We're looking at more rules today. So, Desecrating Bray Herd, when the battle ends, you complete this grand strat if you control two or more objectives, and they're contested by any friendly Bray Herd units. Got it. So this is a win more sort of thing. You gotta be controlling the battlefield at the end of the game. And of course, all heard, I totally knew this without needing to look it up. At the end of Battleshock, you can return D3 plus three models to each end sorry, each friendly Gore, Ungore, and Ungore Raider unit on the battlefield. That's fun. <laughs> uh he's got one, two, three, four by ten gores. With paired hacking blades. Go along with that, he's got three shamans. One of them is the general uh, with the Bray Blast Trumpet, which I believe brings yet another unit of gores onto the board once per game. And Bestial Cunning, which should be the um, bring something down within seven once per game anywhere on the board. Yeah, that's what that is. So that's to bring in the. He has one by six Bulgars, that's probably what's coming in within seven to delete something. He also has six Beasts of Chaos Zangor Enlightened on discs. So that is a nice mobile unit that can be a little hitty. Uh, and then two Chaos Gargants. Um, this is something that you don't really see other Beast players bring. And Jacob and one of our other friends talked it out, and like my friend Travis, was, who's been on the show for our team tournament discussion um was like yo these seem real good for 150 points <laughs> and jacob I, I think he has even brought a list with three to like a gt and done very well with it um they're very good the the minus one save aura is awesome obviously and um i brought one as an ally in my slaves before but they're extra good in beasts of chaos because um in a beast list, if they are near a Beast of Chaos hero, they get plus one attack. So they have they have a couple profiles that are like they have like three or four profiles, I think, and a couple of them are like one attack. So um yeah, yeah, sorry. The headbutt the headbutt is one attack, the mighty kick is one attack, the headbutt is ren two four damage, the kick is ren one d3 damage. But remember, on top of that Ren, they have the aura of minus one to save. So that's Ren three and Ren two, essentially. And then the club, whatever. The club is five attacks at no Ren, two damage. So basically, you're you're going you you're not doubling the damage because the club has five attacks base. But you know, going from one to two on a four damage attack and a D three damage attack when they're like Ren three and four, like. That's it's good. It's real good for 150 points for 12 wounds that moves eight. Like it's real good. Um, giants are good, and and they're a monster. So obviously they can monster its rampage. Um, 
I I'm surprised that like no other beast players have like gotten on the Gargant train after Jacob has done well with it once or twice. Um, I guess it's been at smaller GTs that like people. It's not like Nova where like people know Nova. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, it's a cool list. Uh, I didn't mention he's got a Zandgar Shaman as well with Slitherak Helm. Uh, do I remember what Slitherak Helm does? Probably not. After a char, oh yeah, all right. So after he makes a charge move, one enemy unit uh, on a two up gets strike last. That's cute. So like, yeah, I don't know. You're you're you got the six Bulgors. Nine is probably overkill. Six seems good um, to go into something from seven and delete some stuff. They leave an opening. You've got the Zangor to go in later, probably in the game. Maybe not the turn they drop down, but. Maybe there's some positioning and then, like, can go in the next turn with, like, some gores who have the Ren juiced up and, like, a Gargant to be reducing armor saves as well. Like, I think that's going to catch people off guard and do some blending. Um, yeah, good luck. Beast, I'm also, I'm happy there's, what, five beasts here to counter the 10 KO a bit. I think it's a pretty miserable matchup for KO against beasts because, like, there's just nothing on the table for them to shoot off. It's like... Get fucked. Um, and this is... This is high drops, so he's not going to be dictating first or second, but whatever. What can you do? Um, the next piece of chaos list, this is Jeremy Williams. Sorry. You can see the names here. Um, I'm going to kind of try and finish this up soon, so let's rush through these. This one's Dark Walkers, so pick up a unit and put it back down, I believe, or bring it back on. Um, protect the Herdstone. Has an allied exalted Hero of Chaos. Don't know what that's for, but cool. Uh, Doom Bull with Beastial Cunning and a Shaman. This is 2x6 Bulgors, 10 on Gores, 10 on Gores, and then 6 Enlightened on Disc. And then a Saigor. God, I want so badly for Saigors to be good. I love the concept. Um, everybody dunks on them. I don't know, they, they probably just need to be a little cheaper or something. Um, but it's two Unbinds, and the, the Mortal Wounds per successful enemy cast is cute. Um, especially, like, I don't know, it's just chip damage on, like, a Slan or Croak or something. I, I, don't know. I think they're cute. They, they probably need a little something to be a little better. Uh, another Dark Walker with Shaman, Zangor, Shaman, Doom Bull. This one's nine Bulgors, ten Raiders, ten Ungors, six... Enlightened on foot, six more Enlightened on foot, three Slangor Fiend Bloods, and then two by ten Raiders. That seems good. Seems like a good list. Uh, another Dark Walkers. Man, every, everybody except Jacob is all into the Dark Walkers. This is Bray Shaman, Zangor Shaman, Doom Bull. And then we got, um, again, the Bray Blast Trumpet. Uh, two by ten Ungors, 30 Ungor Raiders. Seems. Seems excessive, and I don't know why you'd make them. I don't know why you'd make them thirty instead of like, I don't know, three by ten. Just have flexibility and like where you can bring them down, and like you're still gonna get to shoot from off the board with them. And it's not like you're off the board. You're gonna. It's not like you can all out attack or anything. I don't know. That's weird. Uh, two by six Bulgors, two by three beasts of Zang uh, Zangor lanes. So this is in a two drop. That makes it a little interesting. Uh, this one, it's lots of drops. So this is the last one, still Dark Walkers. Doomble, Shaman, Zangor Shaman, starting to look very familiar here. 2 by 6 Bulgors, Ungors. There we go, there's a Chaos Gargant. There we go, alright, we're getting somewhere. 3 by 10 Raiders, there we go, I like that more. I guess, nah, there we go. The other, the, the last list was in a 2 drop, so that was probably why it was 30 Raiders in one unit, was to be a 2 drop, to fit into 2 battle regiments. Uh, and then 3 Fiend Bloods. Travis, you'll be happy to see some some slang bars. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's the beasts list. Let's just go down there. There's some Skaven lists. Um, this looks like a bunch of bells. It's got plague sensor bearers. If you watch any of my world champion videos, you probably have seen the Skaven lists. Uh, oh, are there two Stormcasts? I thought there was only one. Oh, there's, oh my god, there's three Stormcast. There's more than I thought. Let's see what these are. I also play Stormcast, and I want to bring them out again at some point. Uh, so the Hell of Nice one is obviously Gardas. It's got four Stormdrakes. It's got four Drakothian Guard Tempestors. 
which are apparently very good right now. People are seem to be all about the Tempestors, not the Fulminators right now. Uh, Genius of Indictors, Unit of Judicators, and then um, the Arcanum with Griff Charger is very good right now uh, for spellcasting Zvant because he can teleport around and stay safe. Um, and he has like all of the um, he has all the GHP spells uh, and a Castle to be handing out. Plus one save. He's got an arcane tome. Cool. I feel like it's gonna have a rough. I don't know. I feel like Stormcast are in a little bit of a rough place. I don't know how. I don't know how much that extra tactic helped them because it seems like a bad one to me. Um. So then we got two hammers of Sigmar lists. This one is again the Arcanum on Griff Charger, a Castellan, and a Relictor with teleport. This one has four Tempestors, five Vanquishers, five Vindictors, sure, whatever. The, you know, these little things, whatever. It's just building a battle line. What models do you have? Uh, and then again, four Storm, Storm Drake Guard and six Questor Soul Storm. Soul Sworn. I've been seeing people talking these up a little bit. Uh, apparently they have a once per game teleport and count as three models outside your territory. But I can see that. You can teleport once per game, it'll count as 18 on a point. I'm sure they have the standard like three up save for Stormcast. Cool. And you can bring back one of these units once per game. And our last hammers are actually I'm gonna go look up um Questor Soul Sworn. Give me one second again. We are soul swarming the questoring. If my if my if I load, all right, we got God. There's oh, I forget sometimes how many millions of freaking war scrolls there are in uh <laughs> in Stormcast. All oh, right, it's a Warcry Warband. Cool, yeah. So one night is a Knight Relictor in it, and can Soul Guide, so this is what, yeah. The one Knight, one unit is a Knight Relictor. Once per get battle in the hero phase, it can be guided to glory, pick it up, stick it somewhere else, and then for contesting objectives wholly outside your territory, every unit counts to three months. Cool, and yeah, there are three wounds each with the three up save. Move five, the standard Stormcast thing. And the standard three attacks, threes, threes, run one, two damage. It seems it does seem like a solid unit. Um, good for them. <laughs> uh, I can I can see it. I can see how that would be good. Teleporting is always good. Uh, anyway, the next one. This apparently is a warlord for an extra holy command. A warlord for an extra artifact. Got the comet, which caused me all sorts of problems <laughs> in a previous GT. But now that I know about it, I can plan around it a little better. Um, got Celestine Prime. Two judicators with griff hounds. I, I, I love me. I love me my judicator with griff hounds. I'm I'm always tempted to take two, so I can't blame anyone for that. They're cute. Just the the fact that you get the two little griff hounds that can run off away from the judicator and be a little chaff unit is amazing. And they have you know their ren three three damage on two shots like can kill something. <laughs> like that's that's good. Ren three is amazing. And their once per game drop a little mortal wound bomb on something on a point on the battlefield is also good. Um, unlike the Vexilor with the standard, you do have to roll a four up for every unit nearby, so it's not as good. But still, it's a once per game little mortal wound bomb from each of those. I, I like it. I, I, I don't hate taking two. Uh, and then it's got Ionis Cryptborn, who seems amazing. So, great. <laughs> um... Got adjudicator. Oh, this is three adjudicators with Griffounds. That's style. That's a lot of it's a lot of little shitty little chaff Griffound units, and a lot of scary shooting. And I do. God, I like this list. I love this list. This is great. Um, I'm gonna be very. I'm gonna have to follow how good this does, how well this does, because um, I've been playing around with lists, and I think the Cel the Lord Celestine on a Dracoth is a cute little piece that I like. It's just with the glaive, like. It's doing, what is it? It's got, I mean, it's like a Fulminator, right? It's got five three damage attacks on the charge. So it can dish out some pain. It's like 
just a fast little cowboy guy. Um, I dig it. Um, anyway, then we got three liberators for our battle line and one chariot. I love the chariot. The chariot's great, especially at 150 points. It's 12 wounds, I think, on a three up save that does impact hits and like can fight decently. It's fast. It's a great little thing. Um, but again, like same comment with the um, with the other Stormcast list. I do think they struggle a little bit on like battle tactics and stuff. Um, still, um, I don't know. This this has this has a lot of little like having a lot of little chapped units, like the um, one, two, three units of two Griffhounds. Like I guess this can do the one where you get into every table quarter with a different unit and not have them be in combat and get that. Um, it does have run and charge once per game. So that can be useful to get like Ionis somewhere it needs to be into something or even just like, yeah, I don't know. Mobility is good. And then you can bring back one of the unit of liberators once per game with Call for Aid. So I'm, I'll be very curious to see how this list does. Um, the, the Knight Judicators can definitely be a little bit swingy since they're only two shots. Um, it feels real bad when you roll. Um, feels real bad when you roll that one <laughs> to hit. Or um, I believe they're also. I'm looking this up real quick because I, I haven't played Stormcast in a little bit. Um, yeah, so it's two shots at 30 inch range, threes and twos, rend three, three damage. So it does feel bad that there are threes to hit on two shots. You can only give one of these three all at attack, obviously. Um, it would be nice. Honestly, in a list like this, I would like to see a unit of... Um, oh, God. Is it the Vanguard Hunters? What is it? No, Vigilers. Sorry. I would love to see a unit of Vigilers in a list with this many Judicators, because they can shoot something first and give plus one attack to anything else that shoots anything else. Or anything else that shoots that unit. Um, so I would love to see that so you can focus down something with these Judicators and have them all on twos and twos. Then you're at then you've got six shots at 30 inch range, twos, twos, ren three, three damage. You're probably gonna get four of those through on average. Do 12 damage to something from 30 inch range, like pretty good. Um yeah, that's the Stormcast lists. Uh ch -ch 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 -ch. I didn't really talk about the ogres. There are a few ogres. Um, we've got three that are just, I guess people call them monster trucks. I picked up on this. We're also, you know, just all the stone horns and thunder tusks. Um, oh, this one has yetis. That's weird. That's interesting. <laughs> so that one's yetis and big monsters. This one is just big monsters. It's all the stone horns and shit. Um, then we've got a Meat Fist list with two units of Gluttons, two units of Iron Guts, a Lead Belcher unit, the Iron Blasters, and a Tyrant. Um, these must be units of like eight Gluttons, whatever. They're reinforced at least once, maybe twice. I'm not sure. Um, that's interesting. That's not the usual mixed Meat Fist list you see. That's even heavier on like the Gluttons and stuff. Um, the other Meat Fist list is more what I'd expect, yeah. So that, that's more the standard current um, Meat Fist list, where you've got the one Stone Horn to be a Stone Horn, Fire Belly, Slaughter Master, and you've got some Gluttons. Oh, do, do Gluttons come in six? So maybe there's arenas of 12 Gluttons. Um, anyway, this one has two units of Gluttons, Iron Guts, Iron Guts, and the Iron Blaster, and the unit of Noblars. So that's this is this is like the very standard list you see now, and it's very good. Uh, and then the last boulderhead unit uh, was that yeah, Therese Wagner from Tough Crowd, right? Yeah, Tough Crowd, um, with the big old the big old beasties, you know, four battle line monsters and a couple character monsters. Uh, so there's the ogres. Let's see, Night Haunt. Who's the brave soul bringing Night Haunt? It's Scarlet Doom, so it's a bunch of Blade Geists. I think it was 202010. You have Hexwraiths, two units of Banshees. I, man. The, the Banshees are like, God, 
people listening to this might not have ever played Nighthawk, because like people don't play them anymore because they're not amazing. They're not good right now. Uh, the Banshees are good anti-magic tech, and I hope they are good enough anti-magic tech to make some Seraphon real sad if they play this. Um, other than that, it's very fragile, and the Seraphon might just blow them up. <laughs> so hopefully these Banshees can do some work. Um, the character loadout, Spirit Torment, you gotta have the Cruciator, Guardian of Souls, another Spirit Torment, a second Cruciator, I don't know if I like that, you really only need one, um, and I'll rock the Drowner, I think can, can teleport something in his boat with him. I kind of think that it would be better to have one Cruel Gas, uh, and then a unit of, um, Instead of the second one, have a unit of Spirit Host to bodyguard onto. Um, but I am by no means a Night Haunt expert. Uh, what are we missing here? All right, for my friend Travis, I got to look at Slanesh real quick here. Oh, oh my god, and I can't forget. The um, thing I was excited about was to look at some of the cities lists, because this is using the New Cities book. It's probably the first big GT using the New Cities book, and I think there are three cities lists, so I'm very... Excited to look through those and see what people are thinking about what makes a good cities list. Um, so for Slanesh real quick, before we look at that, uh, Glutton for Depravity. So just, I think I think that's just like, don't summon all game and have your 36 Depravity at the end or whatever it is. Uh, contorted Epitome uh, with Flaming Weapon, Strength of Godhood, Crown of Dark Secrets, an amazing, amazing piece. Um, that I haven't seen as much lately, um, locally, playing the Slanesh, um, but still a very good piece. Especially the two award versus mortals against, like, Theraphon and stuff, seems real good. Uh, Lord of Pain, Shard Speaker, is the little caster, and the Mask. The Mask is the one that, like, you can redeploy after everybody's deployed and just, like, stick it in the enemy deployment zone, like, three inches away or something. It's annoying. Just a... It's a little piece that puts a little bit more cognitive pressure, like cognitive load on the enemy. Just another thing to think about that can fuck with them, uh, which is always good. Uh, then three units of archers, five bliss barb seekers, five twin souls, two by six furies, nine untamed beast allied for the um, little chaff screen with a pregame move is good. Uh, and then six Langor fiend bloods. Um, I'm still very skeptical of the Slangors. People want to make them work. They still seem not quite good. Um, friend Travis is pretty high on fiends right now. Um, so rather than Slangors, fiends um, seem real good. And a little sad to not see them on either of these lists, but whatever, that's fine. Uh, so this one is, again, Pretenders, so Infinity Command Points. Again, same setup on the Contorted Epitome, and then only the Mask for another hero. And then we've got 22, 11, 11 Archers, so more shooting in this one. Uh, and then 3 by 5 Seekers, so these are not the Bliss Barb or Slick Blade Seekers. These are just the little shitty, baddest, worst, <laughs> baddest, worst little... Battle line speaker unit. They don't seem good enough to take three units. That seems silly to me. I don't know. Um, but they are very fast. Uh, and then two units of Bliss Barb Seekers. So they're plinking things and giving minus one to save for all your other shooting or things charging. Um, cool. I like the first list better. Uh, all right. So anything else I'm forgetting before we look at cities? Um, Flesh Eater Courts, obviously this is not the new book yet, I think, so I don't care. Um, I do want... Oh, there are some Iron Jaws. I, I was thinking I was thinking earlier I didn't see any Iron Jaws, but there's two. I don't know, it's probably a bunch of pigs and stuff. I'm getting tired, I'm not going to look at them. Um, I know there was some Big Wogs, like Fred is bringing Big Wog um, with... Um, we are Shaman, the Prophet, obviously, with the tattoos. A Swamp Kala, Gobsprack, is this? Did I click the right? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Um, Swamp Kala, Gobsprack, two War Chanters, and then ten Brutes, two by five Brutes, 
three and six score Gruntas. Ooh, an allied unit of four Splata Fanatics. And... Huh. I'm, I'm a little confused at the Swamp Color Shaman, because you think of that as, like, a buff piece for, like, Bolt Boys. But it is only 100 points, and it does have Blizzard. It does... I don't, know. I, I don't think Mork Size Pebble is like good enough to be bringing a Shaman for the Pebble, but I guess if you don't have any Iron Jealous thing, you don't have a Mega Boss here. So if you have an extra. Um, whatever. I don't know. Whatever. Mork Size Pebble. It'll help against shooting. And you're not in grid Actually, you know, you're not in Gritting Blades. So actually, that could help. You know, first turn, you're playing a shooting list. You have all these slow brutes. You pop the Pebble and give yourself all five up ward. Against shooting the first turn, you know what? Great, actually. I, I, I like this one, Little Shaman. And the other thing is the War Scroll spell is amazing. So the War Scroll spell is minus one to charge for your enemy and plus one to charge for you board wide. Um, that's super good. Although, now that I think about it, I think it's only plus one to charge for Cruel Boys units. Um, it's still good, obviously, to give your enemy minus one to charge board wide. Yeah, so, it, oh, uh, okay, never mind, you're never going to cast that. <laughs> you're never going to cast it, because it doesn't say enemy. It says, all right, Summon Boggy Mist is add one to charge rolls for friendly Cruel Boys Auric units on the battlefield, and subtract one from charge rolls for other units on the battlefield. So that will minus one charge all of your own Iron Jaw stuff if you cast that. So never mind. I like this. I hope, I hope Fred knows that. <laughs> That it's not just enemy units. Um, I like this a little less because of that. Um, but, I don't know, whatever. It's a Blizzard Wizard with more size pebble. Sure. Uh, got another big wog with the Prophet, of course. A Weird Nom Shaman, of course, with Hand of Gork. Two War Chanters and Gobsprack. Gobsprack's amazing. You always take him in big wog. I don't know why you ever wouldn't. And we got 10 Ard Boys, which is cool. I like Ard Boys. Uh, sorry, 2x10 our boys, um, with Chavas, 10 Brutes, 6 Brute Ragers, and 6 Grantos. It's cool list. It's the pretty standard, like, Iron Jaws plus Gobsprack. Uh, and then we got, last but not least, Gobsprack, Mega Boss with Destroyer Fasten, 2 War Chanters, a Shaman, and of course, as we keep saying, the Prophet. And we got 10 Gut Rippers, 10 Brutes, 5 Brutes for our battle line, and then 6 Brute Ragers. So no pigs in this. A little surprising. I guess the um, Maul Crush is kind of fulfilling the pig roll of fast thing that's going to get in there and bash things up real good. Uh, I, would, I would love to look at some Slaves lists, but I'm just kind of out of gas. I'll look at this one because it was right there. Harkdrak, two Sorcerer Lords, 20 Warriors of Nurgle with the Icon, 10 Chosen with Slanesh, and 10 Knights with the Banner, uh, and there's each. And we got 20 Splintered Fang that are Corn because the Karkadrak General is Idolater Lord, so he gets to give the mark to the Cultists as well, which is always cool. Uh, I always forgot I always forgot when I used this. I had my Nurgle mark on all my Cultists, I, and I always forgot about it. Um, and then a Cockatrice. Which is a good piece. It's fast, and maybe can make things not hit well in combat. Great. Um, I do wish that... I don't like... I don't know. There's so much KO. When I, I... I saw this list earlier today, when I was looking. And my first instinct was I don't like the Zinch Knights with the standard. But there's so much KO that having a 4-up ward versus shooting on this unit and can get in their face and not worry about Unleash Hell and tie things up. And like, I don't know. It it might actually be really good. Uh this is one. This is a one drop. Um so I don't mind the little bit of anti-shooting tech in the knights with the standard. That's that's not bad. It just makes me sad that one of the answer cell banners is not on the chosen. And since they don't have a banner, I yeah, I don't know. Slanesh without a banner is probably fine. You can still run and charge with your Slanesh hero. Um, you can also maybe do some fun things pulling the knights back out of combat with the Sorcerer Lord. 
of Zinch with Warp Reality and then charging them back in. Um, of course, you got to be outside nine, and so you're making, you know, you're fishing for like a eight inch charge if you do that. Oh, no, so, no, sorry. They don't get plus one to charge. They're, never mind. With knights, it's pretty reliable because they just can turn one of the dice into a four. So you need one, you just need one five up to make a nine inch charge on two dice. Rerollable. That's not bad. Um, I wish, I wish I thought this was going to do better, but slaves seem a little weak right now. Last but not least, what I really wanted to look at before we end is the four cities lists. So this is the new cities book. It's the first big GT that I know of that's like really bringing out the new cities. Um, Noah is the name here that I recognize, so I'm very curious to see his list. Um, but we'll start from the start. So first we have Hollow Heart, 3d6 casting if you roll a 10 up, but the the caster suffers d3 mortals. Um, 3d6 casting is good when you have things like Tenebrial Blades to get off, or Merciless Blizzard to get off, etc. Or your important uh, Warforger spell to buff um, mortals on sixes. Uh, so anyway, this is a Warforger, two Warforgers, sorry. The Pontifex, who's just amazing, you always take her. Battle Mage, whatever, I guess he's turning off commands. Sorceress to do, do the um, <laughs> infinite rend spell on something. Uh, and then you've got your 10 Dread Spears, who I guess that's going on. Ooh, no, Blackguard. Um, sorry, 10 Steel Helms to make these 30 Fusiliers battle line. Then you have 2x6 Command Core, 1 Scourge Runner Chariot, and 20 Blackguard. So I guess the 20 Blackguard's where it's the, um, the Sorceress buff is going. Uh, so that's interesting. The the two by six command core. That's two commands per turn. That on a four up, you're going to make the enemy waste of command point and not get their commands. So that's really annoying. I think you want at least one unit. People are saying two, but that's a big commitment for that. I mean, they do other things. They can bring bottles back. They can. They do all sorts of stuff. They're good. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I like mixing in some of the elves use that ridiculous spell to give infinity rend and enemy doesn't get any saves against a bunch of attacks from one of these units. Uh, then we've got Noah's list, which is all elves, a little dark elf list. Uh, so we have two sorceresses that both have that infinity rend spell, one sorceress with Horfrost, two fleet masters, 30 blackguard, 30 blackguard, 10 dread spears, and then three chariots, five knights, two by ten corsairs. I do wish there's synergy between the knights and the um, the drakespawn chariots that I think is kind of cute. And I I do like the idea of running um, like one or two of the chariots along with the knights because if they both charge, essentially, um, what is it? The chariot is like a four up to do a mortal on the charge, but on like a six, it does like three mortals. But you get plus two to that roll if it's near knights that also charge. So essentially, you get like a like a two up to do a mortal and like a four up to do three mortals, which is I don't know. It's a nice and it's not that many points. I don't know. Whatever. Um, I'm sure no one knows better than I do. But yeah, this is two big blocks <laughs> that I I'm sure they have like two attacks each. And um, they, uh, let me look it up. They're, they're presumably, it's Hollow Heart, so again, can 3d6 cast to try and get the spell off. And um, I don't know why, I guess Blackguard a battle line, maybe if, um, if like you have a Dark Elf General or something. I don't know why they're battle line. Oh, yeah, General if it's Darkling Coven General, so the Sorceress. So looking at the black guard, they have two attacks, three threes, Ren one, that can go to Ren Infinity, one damage. They have a ward of four up when they're within three of a sorceress, and sorceresses have a four up ward. Oh, that's yeah, that's a little nutty. You got 60 guys here that are on a four up four up save, four up ward, move six. Um they have range two on their halberd, so you're probably getting all 30 in to attack. So that's 60 attacks on threes, threes. Potentially Rand Infinity, one damage each. I can see it. I can see how this works. Cool. 
We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the next one, are they all Hello Heart? No, they're not. All right. So the next one is another Hello Heart list with Cavalier Marshal, Talia Vedra. Um, so she has the thing where if she's in combat, she can issue rally even to units that are in combat, and they rally on a 4-up, which is amazing. Um, you just need to have her not die. <laughs> and she's not super, super tanky. Um, then you have the Warforger, who is mandatory, another Warforger, and the Pontifex, who's probably also mandatory at this point. Ten Cavaliers, that's a real hitty block, who along with the Cavalier Marshal will be getting plus three to charge when he is all out. Uh, sorry, best day ever, finest hour. Um, so they hit really hard on the charge, and you can, like I said, give them plus three to charge, which is amazing. Um, the 20 Steel Helms, 20 Fusiliers to fill out Battle Line, three Aether Wings for a little chaff, and the Free Gold Command Core to be real good and turn off a command to turn on a 4-up like I said, and bring some things back and all that good stuff. So a lot of these 20 Steel Helms aren't that tanky, neither are the Cavaliers, but as long as they don't outright die, you're going to be hopefully rallying them on a 4-up and bringing a few back with the Command Core. So um, doesn't look like a ton of bodies, but it seems like it could maybe get a little bit of stuff done. Um, yeah, I'm just so curious to see how these, these lists do. Uh, last but not least, we have an Excelsis list, which, oh my god, what does Excelsis do? It's not one of the ones I thought was really good. Plus one to wounds of Excelsis monsters, and in addition, when an Excelsis free guild Cavaliers unit fights, after all of its attacks have been resolved, pick an enemy unit within three and roll a dice for each model in the Cavaliers unit on a four up. They suffer a mortal wound. It's yeah, that's uh, it's it's like an impact hits thing that happens every turn, every time they fight. Um, not bad. I imagine yeah, he's got two units of ten cavaliers. They're gonna be charging in. Um, yeah, he's got two units of cavalier marshals. So I imagine there's two waves of these coming in. So the the one will. Because because these can each um, finest hour once per game and give plus three to charge. I don't know if that's to one unit or to every cavalier unit within some range. But yeah, this is this is a bunch of scary, fast, hard hitting stuff that is actually also going to grind pretty well because they're doing those mortals on four up. Um, that's scary. Got the minimum <laughs> minimum battle line three by 10 90 point dread spear units. Um, got the Pontifex, got the Warforger, and then has 20 Fusiliers and the Wilder Core Hunters who can move free game and be a little chaff objective grabber or whatever in the shoe drop. Um, oh, man. I, ugh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. This is like, I feel like, so these, the, the Cavaliers are so much less tanky than like, the pigs are in Iron Jaws, um, as as opposed to six pigs are like thirty wounds, because um, they're five each. These guys are two each. So this is a twenty wound unit on a three up. So I mean, three up saves nothing to sneeze at, um, but they could fold relatively quickly. Um, like I almost wish, I almost wish Talia was in this list. To be rallying these Cavaliers on a 4-up would be amazing, especially in Excelsis where they're like grinding with those mortals after they charge. Um, but yeah, I don't know, this could this could blow some things up. These Dread Spears are going to be screening, and then you can blow things up with the Cavaliers. You're probably either killing screens or softening things up with the Fusiliers. I can see it working. I am super, whatever. like I said, I'm super excited to see how these cities lists do. Um, I hope they do well. I am Bush. It's been an hour and a half of talking about lists. So I'm going to call it there. Good luck to all of you who are going to be at Everwinter. I look forward to uh, living vicariously through seeing your placings on Best Coast pairings. Um, Jake and Jacob from my group, hope you both do well. Uh, hope my friends on the MCP side do well as well and have a lot of fun. Nick Roger Gern, good luck to you all. 
Um, I will see all of you in the next video. Have good games, take it easy, be nice, etc. Cheers.